this video we are going to have a look at Noctua's biggest and beefiest air cooler, the NHD15. But because Noctua started to care about our eyesight, they re-released the cooler in a Chromex black line. So for now, it will be all about the Noctua NHD15 Chromex black, like what's in the box, how to install it, how it performs, how it sounds, and we will be going over the good and bad. But to sum up the review, what the fuck Noctua? <laughs> chill, Noctua, chill, they, they are dead. So this is the Noctua NHD15 in its Chromex black version. Being 165mm high, 150mm wide and 161mm thick, this dual tower cooler does not even come close to be considered a mid-size. The six copper black tinted heat pipes are transporting the heat up from the base to these massive hint stacks. From there, the included Noctua NHA15 fans are taking over. These massive 140mm fans are spinning at 1200 rpm while blowing at up to 68 CFM at 1.51mm of H2O while yielding at 192 dB. Included in the box, Noctua packs two of these, one which is supposed to go on the right side and the other one in the middle while being attached to the left heatsink. For the rest of the box, Noctua stayed true to their clean packaging with everything being neatly stuffed into individual boxes. As expected, we will find the usual AMD and Intel installation material as well as some thermal paste, a Noctua glue wool badge, a manual for each platform and a screwdriver to help you install everything. The last things inside of the box can very quickly be mistaken. Noctua adds a little 1-2 PVM splitter as well as two PVM extensions which may look like the shortest extensions you've ever seen but actually these are low noise adapters. So these are meant to limit the fan speed to 900 rpm which translates to roughly 50 CFM. It's okay to add these but this cooler is not loud and the fans are PVM. Who is this for? Does anybody actually use these? Please tell me in the comments, I, I just cannot imagine who would want these. Anyway, on the compatibility list there is a lot to cover. We have AM4, AM3, AM2 and so on until FM1 for AMD. For Intel, we have LGA1200, every LGA1150, 2066, 2011-0 and dash 3, so basically every still relevant socket. When it comes to the installation process, it's the usual Noctua way. For AMD, we first need to remove the black retention brackets, then we need to position the AMD spacers with the AMD mounting brackets on top in a inwards leaning curve and screw everything down. Please note that there are two sets of AMD spacers, the grey ones which are meant for AM4 and the white ones which are for everything else. For Team Blue, Noxia uses their Secure Firm 2 mounting system. For every socket without a backplate like LGA1200 and 1150, we first need to shove the included screws through the included backplate, position it and put the included blue spacers on top. For the Intel sockets with a backplate, we can simply screw in the included screws, but sorry for the missing representation, but I do not own any of these platforms. On both platforms, we can proceed by installing the mounting brackets in a outsticking orientation and screwing it down with the thumb screws. Now for AMD and Intel, we can proceed by putting some of Noxia's thermal paste on top of the CPU, install the cooler on top and screw it down using the provided screwdriver. The last step would be installing the fans using the included fan clips and hooking everything up to the same fan header using the PVM splitter. Overall, looking at every CPU cooler I've installed so far, it was the most enjoyable installation procedure yet. The screwdriver is crap, it, it really is and this is how an included screwdriver should look like, but the fact that the bottom plate is prefixed with the screws also being prefixed to the plate made it so incredibly easy, even while installing it in a upstanding motherboard. Overall, amazing installation and everything underneath this level of easiness is, is just bad. With every feature out of the way, let's get to the what the fuck Noxia part. We tested the NHD15 on our usual bench table using a 3900X locked at 4.36GHz and 1.4V core. Hitting the CPU with the fan spinning at 100% fan speed, the NHD15 managed to keep the CPU at 48 degrees C above ambient. That's 3 degrees less than the Arctic Freezer 50 and 6 degrees less than a Dark Rock Pro 4. 
Sure, I noticed that the overall cooler proportions are slightly bigger than a Docker Pro 4 or Freezer 50 and that the D50 uses dual 140 fans, but that's a hell of a difference. This thing competes with the Fantex Glacier 360. Lowering the fan speed in 10% decrements really didn't change anything. The D15 beat absolutely everything and the only coolers I have that are able to beat it are my top of the line 360mm IIOs. Once we normalize everything it changes quite a bit though really not too much. The D15 may not be able to keep the CPU as low as an Optic Freezer 360 though it can perform a bit quieter at higher temperatures. Compared to any air cooler it it absolutely crushes them. The only real competitors to this behemoth are the extremely quiet Be Quiet coolers, which as soon as you even touch the fan speed immediately perform quieter than a D15 at the same temperature. Here are also some sound comparisons. Looking at the cooler as a whole, amazing. I, I am honestly kind of shocked how far an air cooler can push it and sure it is not the absolutely quietest cooler I've seen but it is still in the top 3 while performing as the absolute best and the performance and noise are still absolutely amazing, especially performance. The installation procedure is top notch. I love that I don't have to keep anything in place while mounting the cooler, that, that's just so convenient. Though I would have really loved to add a good looking noxious screwdriver into my collection. The only thing that kind of annoyed me a bit during the whole process are these outstanding fins which are keeping the, the fan clips in place. If you look closely there are two of them. The outer ones are meant to keep the main part of the clip in place while the inner ones are holding onto the piece that you are holding onto if you want to remove the fan. What can happen during installation is that this outer part of, of the fan clip may fall into the outer part of the fin keeping pieces. And this just ends up being a real pain in the ass to get out. Here on the table it's pretty easy, but if it is built onto a motherboard, built into a case, or, or if you want, need to keep something in place in the same time, it's, it's a really pain in the ass. And while looking at the, that clip, I don't really see a reason why that second indentation is there. It, it, it really looks like the outer one can support the fan without a problem, so maybe just get rid of it? And on the second issue I have, I do believe that you should not add that low noise adapter into the box. Sure, that one guy in Tristan da Kunha will be pissed, but I'm pretty sure that there are hundreds of people wondering why the D15 is not able to keep the Tfold 12900K cool because they mistaken these for PVM extensions. But okay, who is this cooler for? Well, people with a really big case. At 165mm height, this will not fit into an average mid tower or even big tower. Secondly, as hard as it sounds, this is only meant for really big CPUs. Sure, you can cool a 3600X with this and it will work just fine, believe me it will, but it is overkill. So this is more for higher end CPUs, 3900X, 12900K, all of that kind of stuff. On the price side, the D15 is a bit more expensive than the other big boy coolers that we compared it to at 105 euros or 110 dollars on Amazon US, but it is still outperforming them. And then again, if you want to go any lower in terms, you will need to go a, for a 360 all in one, which costs even more. So, in my opinion, the price is absolutely justified. Okay, so this should be it for my Noctua NHD15. At this point, I would like to thank Noctua for sending me over this behemoth of a cooler. And now I'll hook it up to a couple of real extensions and place it outside so I can effectively combat climate change until I need it for another video. But for you, I hope you've enjoyed it and if so, make sure to leave a like and your opinion in the comment section below and make sure to be subscribed because we still have a ton of new reviews coming. But in the meantime, maybe have a look at the Noctua NHU9S review. It is the small, 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 very small sibling of the D15, but it is, it has its purposes. Anyway, see you next time, bye bye.